All right, in today's video, we're gonna take a look at the construction of voltaic or galvanic cells. These are electrochemical cells where we take spontaneous redox reactions, reactions with large equilibrium constants, and we use them to generate electricity. In other words, we're basically creating a battery, although a, a real battery would have more than one cell working together. This is gonna be a single cell. The cell we're creating is gonna be using solutions. So these are technically referred to as wet cells because they have solutions in them. An actual battery that you would use is usually got some kind of moist paste inside. It's not, got, it's not filled with liquid. So those are referred to as dry cells. So I've got three different solutions here with copper sulfate, zinc sulfate, and magnesium nitrate. They're all at one molar concentrations. We've got strips of metal, a strip of copper metal, a strip of zinc metal, and I've got some magnesium metal as well. Those will serve as, as the metal electrodes in our cells. So let's start by taking some of the copper sulfate solution. This is one molar copper sulfate solution. I'll put that into this beaker. This will be one of the two half cells in our voltaic cell. Then I'll use zinc sulfate, one molar as well, in the other half cell. I'll take a strip of zinc metal, I'll put it into the zinc solution. I'll take a strip of copper metal, I'll put that into the copper solution. Now we have the two half cells, but we have to connect them, right, to complete a circuit. So there's different ways you can do this. The standard way that you'll see in most textbooks is a U-shaped glass tube. We'll just call it a U-tube. And I'm gonna take another solution. I'm gonna use ammonium nitrate, which is a salt solution. So the ammonium nitrate is pretty concentrated. It's also one molar, although its concentration is not critical. But it has ammonium ions and nitrate ions, which are going to conduct electricity through the salt bridge. So I'm gonna fill the U-tube with the ammonium nitrate solution. I'll fill it close to the top. And then I'm gonna take some cotton and I'm gonna insert the cotton into one side of the tube. This will just prevent it from flowing out, but the cotton will be soaked into the solution. And the, okay, and now with the other tube, maybe I'll do this over a beaker, it may, it may spill out a bit. So I'll take the other cotton ball and I'll put it on the other side. And again, the cotton is getting soaked with the solution. So that's just to prevent it from flowing out when I turn this upside down. So now I'll take the U-tube and I'll put it into the two half cells like that. So now the U-tube is connecting the two half cells. I've got a Vernier Lab Quest connected to a voltage sensor. And so on the screen here, you're gonna see the voltage reading. Now, at this point, if you have an electro, uh, sorry, a table of reduction half reactions, you might wanna pause the video and take a look at that. So what you want to decide by looking at the table is which of these two um, half cells, the copper half cell or the zinc half cell, which one would be the cathode in our voltaic cell and which one would be the anode? Remember that the cathode is the site of reduction while the anode is the site of oxidation. If you're looking at your table of reduction half reactions, you'll see that the copper has a higher reduction potential than zinc, okay? Look on your table and, and confirm that. Copper has a higher reduction potential than zinc. So that means if copper has the higher reduction potential, reduction will happen over in this half cell. So this half cell will be the cathode where reduction occurs. In the other half cell where zinc had the lower reduction potential, this is where oxidation will occur. 
So oxidation will occur in the zinc half cell, and therefore this electrode is going to be the anode in our voltaic cell. I'm going to take the black lead, the voltmeter has a black and a red lead. I'm going to connect the black lead to the anode, so to the zinc electrode. And I'm going to connect the red lead to the cathode, so to the copper electrode. And when I connect those, if you look at the screen here on our lab quest, you can see that there's now a voltage reading. Why don't you pause the video and see if you could do a couple of things. Can you, whoops, can you, let me go back to the main screen there. Can you record for yourself the two half reactions that are occurring in our half cells, remembering the copper is where reduction is happening, the zinc is where oxidation is happening. So can you write the two balanced half reactions? Beside each reaction, put down its oxidation potential or its reduction potential. Then write the overall balanced equation and the overall cell potential. Predict what it should be. Now we're using one molar solutions which would mean we're going to be pretty close, I hope, to standard, um, volt, uh, standard cell potential. But the temperature in the room is a little bit cold, so we're not really at 25 degrees Celsius for standard conditions. We also have probably some corrosion on the, on the two metal electrodes. I didn't take time to clean them. And they don't make perfect contact with the, with the um, alligator clips. So there's a few reasons why we might see an observed voltage a little bit different from the calculated predicted voltage. But go ahead and try to calculate what the cell potential should have been for this, uh, for this voltaic cell and see how close our measured voltage actually is. So this is a standard, simple example of a voltaic cell, right? So let's think about what's happening. At the copper electrode, reduction is occurring because copper had the higher reduction potential. So that means the copper ions that are floating in this solution, the copper two plus ions, are colliding with the copper strip. And when they collide with the copper strip, they gain electrons and become copper metal. So the half reaction occurring here would be Cu2 plus gains two electrons and becomes Cu metal. So if we let this operate over time, we would expect that this electrode should get heavier. Copper metal is being created, it's being formed at that electrode. We'd also expect the concentration of copper ions in this solution to drop. The copper ions are being reduced, so they started at a one molar concentration. Over time, that concentration would drop and the solution would become less and less blue colored. The blue color is because of the copper two plus ions. So electrons must be flowing through this wire into the copper electrode where those electrons are gained by the copper cations and reduction occurs on the surface of this electrode. Now these electrons that are coming into the copper cell, well, they're coming from the zinc cell. Right? So the zinc cell is where oxidation is occurring, and oxidation is the loss of electrons. So electrons are coming out of the zinc strip through the black wire, and they're going over here towards the copper strip. So this is where oxidation is occurring. The zinc atoms that are in the zinc metal strip are losing electrons. They're being oxidized, and they're being turned into zinc cations, zinc 2 plus ions. So the zinc strip over time should get lighter and lighter because it's losing zinc atoms and the concentration of zinc 2 plus ions in our solution should increase. We started with a one molar zinc solution that should increase because we're producing zinc 2 plus ions. Now the salt bridge, remember it has ammonium cations and it has nitrate anions. To complete the circuit between the two half cells, the anions, the nitrate ions in the salt bridge, would be flowing towards the anode. So the electrons, the negative electrons, are flowing through our circuit like this. And then in the salt bridge, the negative anions, the nitrate ions, are flowing in this direction, which completes the circuit of negative charge. 
at the same time that the anions are flowing through the salt bridge towards the anode, the cations, the ammonium ions in the salt bridge, are flowing towards the cathode. So anions go to the anode and cations go to the cathode. So we have a complete circuit. We understand how the movement of ions. We understand where oxidation and, and reduction are occurring. We basically, we have a pretty good understanding of this voltaic cell. Now there is another pretty common setup of a voltaic cell. It does not use a, a salt bridge like a U-tube. What it uses is called a porous cup or a clay cup. So I've got here soaking in some water one of these porous cups. It's basically just made of clay, like a, like a flower pot, okay? like a terracotta flower pot. So it's been soaking in water, and you can see it's a little bit off-colored because it's been used over the years. Let me, I've poured out the water, and I'll put the clay cup into our beaker. Now I'll take some of the magnesium nitrate solution. This is a one molar magnesium nitrate solution. I'm gonna pour that into the clay cup. All right, so there I've got magnesium nitrate in the clay cup. And I'll take a piece of magnesium metal. This will be the magnesium electrode. And I'm gonna put that into the magnesium solution. All right, so, and again, I'm not gonna take time to clean this. So there's probably some corrosion on the surface of that magnesium, which will affect the voltage. I'm gonna, of the, for the other electrode, let's make use of our copper strip again. But this time I'm gonna put the copper strip outside the clay cup in the outer beaker, okay? And I'll take my copper solution and I'll pour the copper solution again outside the clay cup into the beaker. All right, so the one half cell is in the clay cup that contains the magnesium solu solution, the magnesium nitrate, and the magnesium metal strip. That's our one half cell. The other half cell is outside the clay cup. It's the copper solution, copper sulfate, one molar, and the copper electrode. Because the clay cup is porous, it allows um, liquid to move through it, and with the liquid, anything dissolved in liquid can move through the walls of the clay cup, we no longer need a U-tube as a salt bridge. The ions in the solutions can move through the walls of the clay cup to complete the circuit. So now if you look on your table of, half re of reduction half reactions and you look up copper with copper 2 plus and magnesium with magnesium 2 plus, pause and see which one of those has the higher reduction potential on your table of reduction potentials. You should have found again that the copper has the higher reduction potential. So copper will again be the cathode in, where reduction will occur in this um, battery, in this, in this voltaic cell. So I'm gonna take my red, electro, my red lead and attach it to the cathode and the magnesium strip will be the anode. So I'm gonna take these where oxidation will occur. I'm gonna attach the black lead to the magnesium strip. And now you can see we've got a larger measured potential. If you want, you can write for yourself the two half reactions that are occurring. So at the copper strip, because this is where reduction is occurring, copper two plus ions are gaining electrons again and becoming copper metal. They're being reduced to form copper metal. So the copper strip will again get larger this reaction happens at the surface of the copper strip. Electrons are coming through the wire into the copper strip. It becomes negatively charged in the solution as electrons flow in, and that negatively charged strip attracts the co positive copper ions where they will gain those electrons on the surface of the copper strip and be reduced. 
so we expect copper metal to precipitate there. In the clay cup, the magnesium is being oxidized, so the magnesium metal is losing electrons. The, electro the magnesium atoms are losing electrons. They become magnesium cations and flow into the magnesium solution inside the cup. So the magnesium concentration in the solution will increase while the copper concentration out here will decrease. The electrons that are lost in this oxidation flow through the wire back towards the copper where they are gained. And there is our measured voltage. You can compare that from the, to the predicted voltage for a standard cell. Again, this is not quite perfectly standard conditions, but you can compare this to what you would have predicted using your table of reduction potentials. So there you have it, two different versions of voltaic or galvanic electrochemical cells where we're using the spontaneous redox reaction, in this case between the magnesium and the copper 2 plus ions, magnesium giving electrons to the copper 2 plus. We're taking advantage of that spontaneous reaction to generate electricity through this voltaic cell.